Hey guys, this is Lee here, and in this video, I'm going to share with you tips and tricks that I have developed that lets me get the most out of my boat. I'll share with you the proper techniques on towing a sunfish on the water, raising your sail while you're on the water, and I'll also share with you some other things that can make your sailing experience more enjoyable. But before we get to the video, I'd like to thank all the subscribers who subscribe to the channel. In the future, I would love to bring you live streaming from YouTube, but in order to do this, I need a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't already, please press that subscribe button right down there. It's easy and free to do. And I could bring you more tips and tricks, sailing related items, equipment reviews, and more in future videos. Thank you, and now to the video. Uh, one thing I wanna talk to you about today is uh, the daggerboard and the bungee that I hold the daggerboard with. So what I do is I have a bungee cord, nice and thin and long, it goes around, I put it around the tack where my spars meet in the front. And what that does, it holds up my daggerboard when I like to lift up my daggerboard. Now you might be saying, it's like, when do I lift up the daggerboard? There's a few things and a few times you definitely want to lift up the daggerboard and that is uh, returning to the beach or or leaving the beach because obviously you're gonna be in shallow water. But you want the daggerboard down for stability. So you might have to compromise and put it in halfway, especially when you're just launching. It's, there's nothing wrong with just putting it in halfway and the bungee cord will hold it up for you. It helps you launch and it also helps you if you capsize, it will not swim away from the boat. So it's actually a, a safety thing too. Um, when I'm sailing downwind, I kind of have it about 12 inches. Some people have it that much, and it depends on the wind conditions. Some people, and I just lifted it up, some people have it this high, and as you can imagine, there's only a few inches of daggerboard underneath. Now, the advantages of lifting the daggerboard, especially going downwind, is that there's less drag, and then there's less opportunity to catch things like a piece of eelgrass, seaweed, or plastic bag uh, going downwind. The disadvantages of it it's really less stable. If you can handle the stability and then you can just, you can just practice this and you can, your boat rocks a little bit more. You don't have to sail the boat totally on, on the left side and the right side equally. I'm sitting on the starboard side and my butt is almost going into the water. That is actually fast because you have less surface on the water. It's called uh, wetted surface area. So here I have a set of waves on a motorboat or a yacht or a cruise ship. And I don't want to like hit them side on because that can get kind of like really rocky here. Oh my gosh. So what I do is I try to anticipate the waves when I see them. And I, depending on what direction, I'll either just turn down with them. So I'm not hitting them to the side. And look how my boat kind of like just evened out. And I'm going with the waves. Or if I'm going upwind and I see a bunch of waves, I'll try to hit them at a better angle. But the worst angle to hit waves is, is basically on the side of the boat, which is also called the beam of the boat. Because any boat, a uh, power boat or a sailboat, a, a beam C, that, that's what they call when waves are hitting the side of your boat, is very uncomfortable. So be more comfortable in your boat. Don't sail with the beam C if you possibly can. So one thing you might want to do when it's blowing, especially really light, is when you're going downwind in this situation. So my sail is fully out. Most people will, will sit in the back of the boat. And it's comfortable and fine. But if you want to get more performance out of your boat, you want to sit more in the front part of the cockpit, which will get your transom out of the water, especially if you're like me, I'm 200 pounds. And sailing in the back of the boat is basically I'm dragging my my back end of the boat, which is not fast. When you're reaching or you're going down downwind, I get a better feel of my main sheet and you can feel the sail more and the tension when I trim before the block. So it goes from the boom, the main sheet, and now it's going straight to my hands and there's the block. So it feels like I, I could really feel every nuance of this light wind. And that's important when you're in really light air, especially, or if you just wanna eke out that extra little bit of speed. 
Try holding the main sheet with your fingertips and you will be able to feel the slightest winds better. So try that. Try trimming the main sheet in front of the block, directly from the boom, and try to sit really far forward with your leg touching the front part of the cockpit. See if that helps. So what I do, if I'm a little bit too less than I hold my daggerboard, I will slide it down, probably about here. I feel a lot more stable. And when you feel stable, I can actually lean it, lean it more so my sail's more in the air. When your sail is up in the air more compared to down here, so I'm going to lean it flat. So it's down here, if I lean it to leeward, it's even closer to water. So if I lean it to windward, now I got another few feet of sail in the air, and then that's faster. And sometimes it's fun going faster. But the most important thing is to sail, have fun and smash that like button. So there's a lot of people out there who want to sail with other sunfish people and they want to just talk to people. The best thing to do is find a regatta near you. In the sunfish class, there's, there's literally a couple hundred regattas a year and not all of them are extremely competitive, but every regatta is friendly. A lot of times you'll have people who said, oh, I, I sail a sunfish when I was 12 and my grandfather got it for me when I was 10. They actually still have the boat from like 1986 or something like that. And they get back into it, they find a club near them or they find people who sail and they start to sail or they start to race. Even if you're not a racer, it's really good to go out and start learning about sailing. And one thing about having a schedule, just say if you go out on a Tuesday night or something for a couple hours, then there's gonna be other people out there to share information with, to share the experience of sailing. And you start to get to, to meet a whole bunch of different people. And some of the best friends that I've met have been from the Sunfish class. And this that's really why I sail a Sunfish is because I get um, a lot of fun sailing. The people that you meet, it's, it's just priceless. I've been sailing for a couple of decades and the people are so welcoming. For instance, like if I needed a piece for my boat, I was able to borrow some pieces and people help out. Very, very friendly class. It's really easy to go and get a boat for several hundred dollars, fix it up. Some people love fixing up these sunfish. I personally am not as good. And there's some amazing, amazing projects being done. That's another aspect of doing a sunfish. It's easy to do. If you like to do it, there are parts, spare parts, old boat parts that you can piece together and Frankenstein a boat together. And you're not gonna be spending thousands and thousands of dollars if you just want to have a project boat and get on the water. So that's why the Sunfish and Sunfish class is, is uh, a great entry boat. So when you're towing around and it's light air, you gotta figure out where the wind is going, because if there's no wind, you can't make your sailboat go unless you're going to scull it or paddle it, and that's not really sailing anymore. Some things that you want to try to look for is look for dark patches on the water. I don't know if you could see any. It's very light out here. It's probably blowing like four or five. Um, I also look at uh, other boats, and those boats out there, they seem to be in kind of like not moving mode and there's no reason for them not to be moving because they're supposed to get to the race course. Behind them, I see actually darker water, so they're probably waiting for that puff to come down. All the way, there's smokestacks on the other shore, so that's gonna give me some sort of indication that the wind is either coming so you can figure out the direction of wind from there. So look at the darkness of the water, other sailors, now their sails are starting to fill, so that means they're getting wind. Look at patches on the water, smokestacks, flags, and sometimes you could even look at something on the land like a bird and if a whole bunch of birds are standing on pylons they usually are facing the same direction and that's usually towards in the wind or sometimes they spread their wings out to air their armpits is it armpits or is it wing pits yeah they try to air out their wing pits so um those are some of the factors now if you have a keen sense of smell sometimes you could smell either the ocean or the marsh or a dump or something and if you know where that is coming from you could possibly figure out where the new wind is coming from if you haven't actually sailed and raced it's even if you haven't raced before and if you go out and 
say with three or four other people. It's so much fun to be near people and close to people and sailing. You don't actually have to race, but it, it's just fun sharing the experience. Here we got a sailor over there, dropped his rig. That's actually Eugene Schmidt. There's Eugene, he's tweaking his boat. He's a, he's a tweaker. Let's see what he does, he's gonna lift up his sail. Okay, so if you notice, he's uh, he's on the front of his boat. His knees are spread out and on the cockpit next to the mast. That's very stable when you're doing work on the boat there. Uh, He's sailing along, his, his sail is luffing. His main sheet's a little tight, so that's why he's sailing, but he's in control. He adjusted the height and the tension of his halyard, and now he's just getting back. This boat is very stable, now he's just sitting down. And that's, uh, that's how you lift up the sail. You get yourself right up to that mast, make your adjustments, have your main sheet loose, and let it luff, and you can do a lot. What's really cool is there is a lot, a lot of middle tier sailors that have been sailing for years and years and years. And there's some people that haven't been sailing for more than a year. And they're out here competing against basically the LeBron James, the Michael Jordans, the Mario Andretti's, and the Derek Jeter's of our sport. So what other sport can you get on the court with Michael Jordan or LeBron James and say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to play with these guys. You can do that in sailing and that's what's what's great about it. And you don't have to be six foot eight. You don't have to have a 300 yard drive and you don't have to be the size of a linebacker to play with the best. So we're going to be telling both the boat, the boat, the boat. And the way to do this efficiently is, and safe to, safely for your boat, is to, you could do tow lines or we could just take off the main sheet off the boom. So, what we like to do is put the towing line through the bow handle and then tie a bowline around the mast. And then we take the boat in back and they do the same thing. They take their main sheet or a tow line, go through, they tie it to their mast, go through the handle. They're gonna throw each other, there's gonna be a big line. And that keeps it straight. Then the line comes here. And we have a bowling around. This other bowling here. And that keeps the weight off the mass, right? It takes, it takes extra the, the, all right, excellent. One pulling this way, one pulling this way, it's like center. Uh, how about your centerboard? What's your suggestion? <laughs> I basically like to put it in like halfway. Yeah, I just raise it up a little bit. We can't and then we just steer. Yeah, exactly. Everybody ready? Oh, ready. Everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five boats all set up. All right. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you got some value from it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. I read all of them. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and press that notification bell so you know when we come out with a new video. Thanks, and I'll see you on the water.